Hello everyone, welcome back to the CIA video series for this book. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at chapter 13, which is focused on exploiting SUID binaries. And uh, again, we're simply going to be using the same uh, target virtual machine that we set up in um, in chapter 11 of this particular of this book. And we also took a look at how to do that in uh, in the CIA video for chapter 11. So again, the same process will apply. We're using the same VM and you can then log in via SSH using the uh, the credentials to give you an initial foothold. All right, so uh, I've already explained within this particular chapter uh, what an SUID binary is and uh, I've explained the entire system of permissions and how they're assigned to files and directories on Linux. So you should have an understanding of that before you begin the practical aspects. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at how to search for SUID binaries on the target system, right? So we can do this both manually and automatically. So let's get started with uh, doing this manually. So we can use the find command uh, to actually search for SUID binaries. So if, uh, let me just paste that in here. You can see that this find uh, command will actually search the root file system of the, uh, of the Linux system of, or the root of the Linux system and it's going to search for files. Now the permissions here are the most important aspect. Uh, you can see that uh, the permissions have been set uh, that we're actually looking for are uh, actually have the S sticky bit here, which uh, as I mentioned earlier on in this chapter, referred to the SUID permission. All right, so if we hit enter, this is going to uh, identify all SUID binaries and it'll actually list them out in a, in, in a listed format. And of course, we, we are going to be looking for a few things here. Number one, uh, we're looking for SUID binaries that we can actually execute, right? Uh, but have, uh, as you can see in this case, all have been created uh, by the by the by the root user, or all have been um, have actually been configured by the root user here. Um, right, so now that we've been able to identify that, um, or we have been able to search for SUID binaries manually, let's take a look at how to search for SUID binaries with the LinPs utility, all right? So the LinPs utility, uh, we actually have the script on our target system. We copied it over earlier on in chapter 11. Uh, we can essentially just head over into the temp directory, which is where I stored it. Um, there we are, and we can then run the linp script. So I'm going to say linp.sh, and we're going to let that uh, complete the enumeration. After which, we'll then uh, I will then take a look at the SUID binaries it was able to identify or was was able to find, and uh, we can then begin the exploitation process. Right. So uh, we'll give that a few seconds. All right, so uh, Linpeas has actually completed enumeration of the various um, of the you know various information, local information uh, of this particular system, and of course, it's able to identify the SUID binaries here. And uh, you can see it's going to highlight in red the, the the ones that you should be taking a note of. Uh, but we aren't able to identify anything interesting in this list. However, if we take a look at uh, the actual S trace uh, checks here to find hij hijackable libraries, uh, we can explore this and uh, if we can see that for the SUID SO uh, SUID binary, uh, we can see a few interesting, um, interesting findings uh, when it is essentially executed uh, with S trace. All right, so S trace, if you're not familiar with it, is a Linux utility that's used to monitor and debug, uh, debug applications uh, and processes and the interaction with the Linux kernel. Now, when we talk about, um, as you can see right over here, it's, when, we talk, when we talk about libraries on Linux, we're essentially talking about DLLs on Windows, right? And on Linux, they're essentially called shared objects. So you can see, for example, here that uh, at the bottom, it's going to, uh, this particular binary, uh, you know, whatever it does is going to do the, is, it actually requires the following libraries to function or actually calls upon them. Uh, and in this one right over here, we can see that it calls upon one that is stored in the user home directory for the current uh, unprivileged user that we have access to. It stores it in the config directory and the, um, the actual shared object that it's looking for or that it's trying to call is called libcalc.so, right? And uh, you can see it's not able to identify or find it, which means uh, that it doesn't exist, number one. But secondly, because it's actually looking for it in our current user home directory, 
it means we can actually create this particular shared object file and get it to execute a code that will provide us with a reverse shell. Now, it's important to note that as you can see, this SUID binary, uh, we already know what an SUID binary does. So we know it's going, to let, uh, it's going to let us execute something or do something as the root user or with root privileges. Now, in this case, we don't know what SUIDSO does. So that's going to be the first thing we need to do is try and identify what it does, right? So I'm just going to um, terminate uh, uh, LinPs here because it's still going actually. I actually thought it completed. So I'm just going to let this, uh, I'm just going to let this complete because it's not terminating for some reason. So I'm just going to let that complete. All right, so LinPs is complete. So again, if we want to use or, you know, just see what this particular SUID binary does, um, we can just say S, uh, S U I D S O. We hit enter, and we can see that it does, uh, you know, it does something very simple. It runs some sort of calculation and provides us with a progress bar here, and then it says done. All right, now, uh, if you don't want to use LinPs for your enumeration or you know to perform your analysis with S trace, you can also do that manually if the S trace utility is available or is installed on on your Linux system. Now it it pretty much comes I uh, uh, it pretty much comes with most Linux distributions, and again as I said you can always uh, you can always run the analysis manually. So for each uh, SUID binary, so if I paste in the command here and I hit enter again, it gives us the same uh, it gives us the, the same results that we were able to obtain uh, when we used uh, lin uh, when we were able to use linpeas so you can see at the bottom here it calls upon one uh, one particular shared object uh, that uh, again you can see it right over here it it's not able to identify it number one and secondly it's stored in the user home directory which we currently have access to right uh, now again we can also run the strings utility to identify useful strings so we can say strings and then you know user uh, user local bin uh, s u i d s o we hit enter sorry let me just uh, correct that that is strings not strings uh, there we are so you can see that this will display a list of strings that uh, you know are actually were were actually uh, we are able to identify after compilation of this binary from the original source code and at the bottom, you can see that uh, we are able to identify that particular shared object that it calls upon. Now, this is not that conclusive in terms of whether or not this application is uh, or this binary is actually calling upon that shared object. But uh, again, it's a good it's a good indication that this is something that we should look into. All right. Now, if we list out the contents of the user home directory, you can see that we don't have a config directory. So that's going to be the next step, right? So we have to create the user's home, uh, the user config directory here. So we're going to say make uh, make dir, and we're just going to say config, and then within that config file, uh, we want to create the libcalc uh, c file because that's where we are going to be pasting in our C code. Uh, that again, when compiled, will connect back to our our Kali IP uh, or our Kali VM uh, through a reverse shell and will provide us with root privileges. So we'll head over into the config directory now and uh, we want to create the file. So we're going to use the touch command. So touch and we'll just call it lib um, libcalc and show that you get the name correct of the shared object. But in this case, we're creating the C file first because we need to compile. Uh, we need to compile the C code into a shared object file. So we're just going to create that file. The next thing we want to do is we want to use a, uh, a, uh, a text editor to add our C code here. So I'm just going to open up uh, the file. So libcalc.c with uh, vim. And I'm going to paste in the C code here. But you can see that it's not, uh, it's not been formatted correctly here. So I'm just going to make sure that it's formatted correctly. Um, right. So I'll just uh, make sure that that is set up correctly. There we are. Um, we'll get to the function in a second because um, uh, we can see there we are. I'm just going to tab that in uh, so that we have good um, indentation here. So let me explain what this particular code will do. So we can see that we create we have the function inject, right? And the function inject runs a bash command or a system command rather that copies the bash, um, the bash binary into the temp folder, right? And then it, uh, it actually, uh, it actually applies uh, the, uh, the SUID sticky bit or permission to that particular bash binary that's been copied into the temp folder. 
and then it runs the, that particular bash binary and that bash binary because it has uh, it has actually it does have suid uh, permissions will actually provide us with a an elevated session right so that's fairly simple to understand uh, right now that we have that out of the way uh, again, make sure that it's correctly indented. We now need to save it, right? So I'm going to save it and we now can use GCC or the GNU C compiler to actually compile this particular C code into the actual shared object file. So I'm going to paste in the command that does that. So GCC shared, uh, there we are. That's the shared flag there, which means this is a shared object. And then we're outputting it into the home user config directory and we're calling it libcalc.so. And uh, again, the file that we're using as the source is libcalc.c. So we hit enter. That's going to generate it for us. There we are. If we list it out, we now have the libcalc.so or the shared object file there, which will now be called upon whenever the SUID SO, uh, SUID binary is executed, right? So uh, now that that is done, we can actually try and execute it. So we'll say SUID SO, we hit enter. And it's going to say calculating something please wait when it calls upon the shared object libcalc.so libcalc.so we we created and uh, we essentially got to 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 execute the following uh, the 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 actual code that we pasted in and that code as i said provided us with an elevated bash session so if we hit id you can see that we are the root user here and we've been successfully been able to elevate our privileges uh, to the highest order or to that of the root user. So if I type in who am I just to confirm, you can see we're currently the root user and we've successfully been ele uh, been able to elevate our privileges uh, to the root user or to essentially obtain root privileges on the target system by exploiting uh, the SUID binary. Um, so that's pretty much all that I wanted to cover in this particular video and in this particular chapter. There, there are various other ways of exploring or exploiting SUID binaries, which you can explore. But this one is a, is a fairly good example of how this can be done. Uh, thank you very much for going through the book if you've reached this stage. And thank you for going through these videos. Uh, we really appreciate your support in purchasing this book and uh, we hope that you've been able to gain a lot of knowledge from this process uh, and you should now have or you should now be extremely competent in elevating your privileges on windows or linux target systems that being said thank you very much and i'll be seeing you in the next book